All right. Uh, another great conversation awaits us on this week's edition of the Growth Podcast. Uh, last week we had an insightful conversation with Sam, uh, quite an emotional journey he had. Uh, and then a fortnight ago we were talking to Win, uh, another young person doing very well. Today we're going back to the young people who are doing very well in their businesses. Um, and the gentleman I'm talking to today is Moses Zulu. Moses Zulu runs uh, an events company. Uh, most people obviously who are so much, you know, uh, into events know him. Uh, if you don't know him, we're going to introduce him to you today. Uh, Moses, welcome to, to the Growth Podcast. Thank you so much to Lange for having me here. You look tired. <laughs> We're always doing events and this is our season, so we have to capitalize uh, before the rain season starts. Come January um, till April, that's when we'll be back. But for now, we have to capitalize and do whatever we have to do this summer. People are out, there's so much spending power, so we need to be out there um, doing events back to back. All right. Yeah. Uh, okay, so t tell me about your events company. How, how did the whole company start? Um, the whole company started in 2016. Um, I used to work for a marketing company, um, but I used to share a lot of my event side of ideas, but you know, they were not taken more serious. So I thought I could work on my ideas and see how they can work. So 2016, 2017, um, 2018, I, I said, you know what, let me, let me get into it. That's when I now form digital events full time, registered it at Pakra, ZRA. Um, it was just me and my friend. Uh, at the time, I had a green vit. So it was just me, my friend, and the green vit. And then, you know, it started just there. You know, we used to, even if we had nothing to do, we woke up every day, every morning. You know, we go out there to look for something to do. Um, the journey wasn't smooth. You know, it, it's been quite hard, but, you know, we've, we've really, really pushed really hard for us to get here. All right, talk, talk to me about your, your, your background, first of all. Um, where did your, your passion for events come from? Um, and how then did that begin to work for your business? You know, I wanted, uh, <laughs> you know, it's a funny story. I wanted to be a pilot, actually, you know. I didn't know that I would enter into events and marketing. Um, and then my sister introduced me into um, events and marketing. And then I fell in love, you know. It felt like work, but it never felt like work. It was play, but at the same time you're working. So it, it was always fun meeting new people, um, a lot of exciting events, experiential events, seeing people happy. I think uh, at that moment I knew that, you know what, this is my space. I have to own it. Um, that's how my passion grew for events. Every time I do something, I, you know, it, it just gives me that morale and motivation to do more because of the passion, the brands that I get to work with. We get to work with amazing people across Africa um, so much, you know. So it's just quite been amazing just learning from different people across Africa, working with amazing brands, um, multinational brands. Um, and, you know, it's been quite amazing. And the passion grows every day. All right. I, I want us to go back to the very beginning. Um, you mentioned you left your marketing job. Yeah, uh, and, and started your events company with your friend and your vids. Are you still your friend, by the way? Yes. Yes, still together. <laughs> okay. Um, talk to me about your first client. Yeah. Like you leave, because most of the time, most people are scared to leave their jobs to, to be on their own. Talk to me about your first client. You leave, and then w what exactly happened? Um, I think my first client, actually, going back to my friend, when I immediately when I left my job, I drove to my friend's house in Woodlands, and I told him, look, I've left my job. And then he told me, oh, wow, that's, that's, that's something I never thought you'd do. Um, and then he told me, oh, Cleo is doing a, a closet giveaway. He saw it on Twitter. And then we said, okay, cool, I have nothing to do. Let's drive there. And then we drove there. Um, we met Cleo there. She was doing a closet giveaway. Um, then, you know, I went to interact with Cleo. And then I saw, you know what, this is some, someone maybe I can work with. You know, um, then I approached Cleo, but she was leaving the country then. Uh, she came back, you know, we sat down, we made, and then I told Cleo, you know what, I have nothing to do right now. I want to be your manager. Um, and then Cleo was, okay, cool, uh, but let's give it a shot. We did an event with Cleo. I think that was my first uh, client when I left my job. Um, we did an event together called Valentine's with Cleo Ice Queen. It was pretty well, it went well. Um, and then 
Cleo really, really loved it. And then we started working together with Cleo. Um, you know, we did a lot of amazing stuff together. Um, you know, I used to, you know, do all her stuff, you know, talk to clients, um, follow up on her invoices, do receipts and all that stuff. So from there, I started meeting new people, meeting a lot of people. Um, and then I was also doing my own events while managing Clio. We started going on tour, um, went different cities, towns, you know, and then, yeah. So where did where, you get the, the, the confidence to just approach someone and tell them how to be a manager? Did you have any, <laughs> did you have any experience managing artists? No, actually, um, it was my first time. But, you know, um, I had no choice. I had to try whatever I can do to just, you know, get by and not just sit idle. I had to put myself in the space that I wanted. Cleo was in, she is in the entertainment business. I wanted to be in the entertainment business. I thought it would be a good way of me, you know, knowing more about, you know, other businesses in, in the entertainment business. You get to work with different um, event companies, uh, event managers, you know. I, I thought at that point it would be a good way for me to enter and know more about the events industry and marketing. All right, uh, that sounds interesting. And so, at the time, did she have a manager? No, she didn't. Oh. So it was the I Good was at the <laughs> right time. At uh, the right time, it was the right time, um, and then I showed up. You know. Okay. Uh, yeah. And 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 then how was the transition? Because look, yes, you 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 you, you got to. to to, to manage an artist yes but that was not your initial plan so yes. for you that was basically an entry point yes talk to me now about how did you really go commercial so um in woodlands we we started now um we had a small one room office i remember we had a graphics designer and then there was me and then my other friend uh boston so that's where we started um you know we'd go maybe to zambia breeze we come up with nice plans and then ask for their support. You know, Zambia Breeze is always, you know, supporting young entrepreneurs. You know, it was a good start for us. You know, we did uh, quite some nice events from there. You know, we, we did more events and more events. Um, networking, I started an, uh, a networking event called Entrepreneur Startup Guide. That was the bridge that I wanted to create between the, the one that you guys have is it the quorum the quorum and that's your event yes oh I never knew that uh, yeah I wanted to create a bridge between CEOs and young entrepreneurs and I thought it would be a good way for me to get into the corporate world you know by engaging these CEOs and captain industries um, and then I started inviting our first one was Mr. Wali Mulewa from Impact Media he came shared some you know, uh, important tips on how to be impo uh, good entrepreneurs. From there, it started growing. We went to Comba from MTN, Mark Townsend from uh, Liquid, Liquid. Um, Dumisani. You know, we had quite an, um, uh, we had Ndela. Um, we had quite a number of uh, entrepreneurs and people in the corporate world um, that came to share their knowledge with young entrepreneurs. And then from there, I started networking with these captain industries you know and they started giving us some business you know at the end of the day and say hey Moses can you do this yeah we can you know from there we started doing building our portfolio and then came last year we hit the jackpot we started working with big companies now and then ever since it's it's been growing how big is your company how how, how big are you guys I, um we have 11 permanent employees and then we try and subcontract when we have events um, we get cleaners, police, um, those are just people we subcontract to just come and help us. Cleaners, you know, DJs, we try and create, you know, some sort of employment for these people. We, we have our um, monthly event, the night market, which has been quite growing. Uh, we had one last week in Livingstone, first time it did pretty well, but our constant ones that have been happening is... Um, Kitwe and Lusaka. So every time we have these, we subcontract a lot of young entrepreneurs, uh, young people just to come and work with us. Um, but um, in terms of the company, it's really, really grown. Looking at where it started and where it's growing. Yeah. And how many years has it been? Has it been? Um, the growth, it's been now, I think, four years. Um, but the growth has been quite big. The growth has yeah. been quite big. T t talk to me also um, about your, your your background. 
your education yes. uh, that what 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 education did you do um um i grew up in kanyama actually we used to stay in kanyama um i did my primary school from grade one to seven there's a uh, those tumakomboni private schools uh, it was called mukwas education center that's where i did my primary school and then when my dad died we moved to kabwata I did my basic school at Kabwata Basic School. I, I did um, grade eight to nine um, at Kabwata. And then from there, I went to Isoka Boys. Um, and then I came back grade 11. I went to Kablonga Boys. That's where I completed my grade 12. Um, and then from there, I went to Nipa. I did records management. Um, yeah, I think that's most of my education parts okay but yeah and, and the reason i'm asking is because um i want to understand uh, guide me through how 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 you learned about managing a business because from what you've mentioned record management is not really business <laughs> management you know and yeah. also you were working in marketing yes. most of your your company by nature is marketing yes. because you can't do an events business if you hardly understand marketing yes, yes. where does your knowledge of running a business come from you mentioned the business has done tremendously well in four years yes and those are the kinds of results that even people who went to business school may not achieve yes so that's what i'm trying to understand like is it natural you got lucky i think i think um it's always been in me in terms of of running a business uh, my dad was a businessman um, I started at a very young age I remember in in Kanyama we were the only ones who had like a fridge so I saw you know what it's October it's very hot I started selling ice blocks you know it's I think it's just always been in me started selling ice blocks from there my dad opened a shop but he had a full-time job working at cabinet office I was the guy in the shop all the time you know I used to go order his stuff he just give me a list you no know, go get this and that you know i go and and i was just you know always with him on weekends when he's home just trying to learn from this man you know um about business from there you know when he passed uh, the business died but after i finished my school immediately i finished my school my my sister introduced me to a zimbabwean man mr patterson um, who I used to work with. I think I learned a lot also from him in terms of marketing, running a business, you know, um, because from I, I started as a promoter or as an in-store promoter person, but from there I became a supervisor and then I became a project manager in a short period of time because he saw my skill of, of you know, business management and working with people, you know, he would leave the country and you know say Moses run an activation I'd run that activation you know perfectly well and then from there I started learning more from him from him you know um, and then ever since you know I meet new people ask them about businesses like I said we started the entrepreneur startup guide learning more from these captain industries you know um, just following them what they do how they run it yeah, I think I've learned more from, you know, from the street and these people that I've met along my journey um, than I've learned in school. But, you know, it's been quite amazing. What, what do you think has been behind the success of your business? I think a lot of hard work, um, a lot of hard work, uh, a lot of support from my family and friends, my team. You know, um, I have an amazing team. Um, I can't even thank them enough because they are always on the ground. We are always working. Um, my family, they are always supporting me. Uh, my sister, you know, they've given me a lot of loans that I've never even paid back because we've done a lot of events. Maybe some have failed, you know, but they've kept on supporting us. My mom, you know, she's always been there for me. Um, I think that has led to the success of our business because, you know, family is always behind me. Okay, so, so you mentioned uh, that you've had some failed events. Talk to me about those ones. How was the experience? The fifth, the, in, in, um, I'm, I'm sure you, cause you can <laughs> tell me that from the first event, it was banger after banger. No, no. Actually, you know, um, we've had quite a number of failed events. Um, a lot of people maybe rip you off. Um, but I remember th there was an event I did at Fox and Hound. Uh, only my family came, you know, and I was just like, wow. Um, we lost quite a lot of money there. Um, I was starting out. 
I never had a lot of knowledge about events and marketing, how to market events. Um, yeah, so we've had quite a lot of, you know, losses. Maybe you do business with your friends with verbal agreements and then at the end of the day you make money, they rip you off. You know, all those are losses that I've, I've learned, you know, along the way. And it's always important. Um, I'm reading a book called The Mafia Manager. Uh, and it, it, it stay, there's one of my favorite quotes in there. Uh, it says, do business with your brothers as if they were strangers. And do business with strangers as if they were your brothers. Because, you know, if we're doing business with our friends and family, we just, you know, do business verbally without putting it on contract. But when the business goes well, everybody changes, you know, there's just always a lot of misunderstanding. But if you're doing business with a stranger, you're doing business with a stranger, you, you put certain measures that, you know, who, who, um, support you or um, make sure that you get, you know, what you agreed. So it's always very important when you're doing business with people to always put, you know, contracts, um, stating all the objectives clear from the beginning, from the get-go, so that you don't get bent, you know, at the end of the day. You've put in a lot of effort, a lot of work, and then somebody, you know, just rips you off. You know, it really, really throws you off. <laughs> if, if, if I have an event, if I organize an event, and yeah. no one shows up, it's over. Good point. Like, yeah. Because cause I remember someone, uh, the last time I was talking to maybe, and I told me, uh, you know that thing where you sell phones and... yeah. One week down the line, I haven't sold anything. Just sold the pouch. <laughs> Good point. And you're asking yeah. yourself, like, are we going to thrive in this business? Yes. You, you have an event. So ideally, how many people did you plan to have at that event? Um, I was looking at maybe having 300 people. And you only know? family showed up. Yeah, only my family showed up. At a time like that, mm -hmm. what is running in your mind? Because obviously, uh, you, I think <laughs> what has always been running in my mind is that my calculations are always correct. That I'll make money someday, some way. Um, and you know, it's always, it, I never saw that I would never make money, you know, even if I don't make no money, but in my head, it's always showing me that the, your calculations are right. Maybe something went wrong, maybe the weather or something. I don't know. It, it, in my mind, it just kept on saying, you know what, Moses, you'll make money. Keep going, keep going. You know, that drive that I had and I said, you know what, this is my space. I just need to go back to the drawing board, re-strategize and go back again um again what has been comforting me you know in my losses is my family you know they always say you know what one day to work out for you just keep on going keep on pushing we are always there for you we'll give you the support you need you know my mom you know whenever i need money she say hey moses i remember i was doing um color fest 2019 um i had paid a down payment to the venue and then um, we were supposed to go set up. And the venue said, you know what, Moses, you won't set up until you clear this 15,000 kwacha. And then, you know, I had no money. I had to pick up the phone again, call my mom. Um, luckily, she said, where are you? Come to my office, come and get the money, you know. It's such, you know, um, cases whereby your family is always supporting you. And, you know, it gives you that drive to keep on going and keep on pushing. Um, and one day, you know, it will really work out. Just this year, we, we've had the biggest color fest in the country. 8,000 people, you know. If I gave up, I wouldn't be here, you know. So it's all the support that I got from my mom, my sisters, my brothers, my family, my friends, the corporate world. That has kept me going to get me here. You know, it's been our biggest year this year. The night markets have been flourishing. The color fest, biggest color fest in the country. Um, you know, we have you know a lot of clients uh, from South Africa that we're working with right now. Um, and yeah, I think that has kept me going. And you know, uh, on 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 the subject of family, have you ever had some members in your family who say, "Look, it won't work. No one came. Go back to school. <laughs> or get a job." Have you ever had someone just whisper those things in your ears? Um, not really, I wouldn't say, but you know, um, my mom is into the, uh, corporate world and, you know, she's always saying, you know, I, I think it, a job would be better for you. But I told her, mom, you know what? I, I can never get rich being an employee. 
I, w- I don't think that's me. Um, for me, I want to define all the odds. You know, what's the worst that can happen to me if, if, if I never had a job, you know? I used to f- uh, have this comfort like, okay, cool, my mom is there, you know, I'll go home, eat shima, sleep, you know, there's a roof over my head. I think it's worth taking the risk, you know, and being an entrepreneur and being my own boss, um, defining, uh, I don't have to report to anyone. I need to do, I can do anything I want and explore, you know, different ideas, you know, try different things. Some will work, some won't. Um, I feel like, yeah. And the, the employees you mentioned, you mentioned that you were a very good team. How did you find them? Because for most people, um, they have good businesses, but yeah. the businesses collapse because you employ the wrong people. Yeah. People that don't either appreciate your vision or people that are just stone cold, you know, um, like these are steel. You know, um, I feel these, you know, for, for people, I like to people, I like to work with people that are, um, I know and trust. And these are my friends that I've known over the years and I know how they operate, you know. Um, I know how to motivate them, how to make them, p- uh, you know, push and go forward and how to make them, you know, do the right thing because these are people I've grown up with. I know what they want, um, what they need. And, you know, um, I give them motivation in a way that, you know, we get things done. Um, so, yeah, I think getting the right team it's always really hard, but, you know, you have to try and see in your circles the people you've grown up with, you know, bringing them in the business, you know, making them understand. I think it's always easier like that to work with people that you know and trust to move the business forward than bringing in people that you don't know, their character, where they come from. I think it's it's always difficult, but for me, what has been, you know, um, that has helped me is bringing in my friends, um, family and you know other people that I've seen you know in other businesses you know and try and poach them and say look come and join the winning team it's a young team um, you know I, I want to see them grow you know that's the important thing seeing my employees or people that I work with grow is the important aspect you know of motivating your people you know because you know I don't want them to work for me forever I want them to grow and if possible, you know, be entrepreneurs like me, um, venture into business. All right. And uh, the other question I wanted to ask you is, you, you did say it's a young team. Like I did say in the beginning, you are relatively young. Yeah. Do you ever get people treat you differently because you're young and you feel if I was maybe 10 years older, you wouldn't treat me like this, you don't talk to me like that. Do you ever get that, especially with the corporate um, clients that you deal with? Yeah, I, d- I do get that. I feel I feel like you know they they a lot of people for me. I d- I don't know. They just like me. Every time I walk in a room, um, you just like Moses Zulu. This is a young guy. You know, he's got the drive, the hunger. You know, um, he really wants to work. He really wants to push. And that's what the corporate world is looking for. Because a lot of other people, they've done it so many times. Uh, the passion has died off. You know, uh, and they're just doing it for the money. But for me, it's for passion. I love to do what I do. You know, I wake up every day. I'm always working every day. I fight a lot with my girlfriend. <laughs> it's because I'm always, always working. Um, but now, you know, we, we, we understand each other. And, you know, it's very important to get the right partner also. Um, that, you know, you see yourself uh, being with, you know, for the rest of your life. You know, I've got a very supportive girlfriend. Um, she really, really supports me. She's always there whenever I need her. Um, you know, she's just the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're campaigning. Uh, yeah. Now, the other thing I want to find out is in, in the events business, Yes. is there room for more people? Yes, I think there's more room for everybody. And where do you think those who want to go into events get it wrong? Um, because they want to copy, because you've seen a food market has worked for Moses. You also want to go do a food market. Um, I think that's where they get it wrong. You know, as as entrepreneurs, we need to look for problems and find solutions. So if if you see Moses' food market is working, you see you ask yourself, where does he get the deco? Who does his deco? You know, maybe you can fit in in the deco business. You know, who does his pr- sound production? His lights. Maybe you can fit in in that aspect. You know, um, who does his cleaning services? You know. 
maybe you can fit in into that you know cleaning service you come and provide cleaning who does is security maybe you can come and fit in in the security business maybe you're good at security you know um there's there's always a lot of um aspect of putting the an event together and we pay a lot of money to security cleaners you know um people that do our sound production the screen um video production pictures you know all that money goes to different people so entrepreneurs shouldn't see themselves as competitors but they should see a problem that i am facing um as an a business person and try and provide solutions that way we can grow together would you say your company is like in in, in the top 10 for event companies I think it's number one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> I've brought more people together than anyone in this country. You know, starting from January, our food markets have been quite amazing. Like I told you, the biggest color fest. Um, I think it's number one. Um, and um, I'll, you know, I'll really push to provide the best service to my clients um all the time you said your company is four years old there are other companies and other players that you found um in the yes. event business yes and you well claim to be number one meaning you bullied your way to number <laughs> one how do businesses thrive where there's already existing competition because you are not the pioneers of events in zambia yeah there were companies before you there's yes. still companies now even after there's still continue to be more companies how can new businesses f bully their way through an existing market with a lot of big players I think it's being creative, um, providing different services to your people, understanding your clients. If, you, if I understand the customers that come to my events and know what they want, I feel like I'll thrive. You know? So I understand the, de the demographic that comes to my event and I give them what they want. You know? And you know, there's always good reviews. I've never seen any bad review. You can go on social media and you know, say, hey, look, there's a bad review on digital events. Um, you know, we give our customers what they need. You know, we always listen to our customers. You know, it's always important to listen to your customers and give them what they need to understand the market. Um, how, how does the Zambian market work? Once you understand the Zambian market, wor how it works, then you understand your, your client that come to your event, what they need, then, you know, you're able to thrive and, you know, do and be the best and be number one in the market. Right. There, there, there are a lot of... Um Instagram entrepreneurs in Zambia. Yes. Um, most of them uh, will hardly even have office space. They, <laughs> they don't have a location. Yes. They've got no office. Yeah. Um, but most of them want to go there. Yeah. How do you know now is the right time for us to transition from just being online to having physical presence? Because for most businesses, the fear is the cost. Now mm -hmm. you've got rent, you've got employees, you've got what, you've got what. How do you manage that progress? I think it's to understand first the type of business you're doing. Um, ours requires a lot of um, storage, um, a lot of um, working space, so we definitely need that space. But um, other businesses maybe don't require the space. Um, I think they can operate where they operate from. But ours definitely, we, we just have to jump in and get a bigger space um, where our clients get to come in. Uh, you know, you know these, these are clients that we work with and they trust us with a lot of money. So they need to see where you operate from. They need to trust you before they give you the business. Um, so it's very important. So we just had to jump in and, you know, risk it and get a bigger space, get a nicer office, you know, make it look pretty and all so that, you know, when people come, they have confidence in us and, you know, they, they know what we're doing and say, look, Digital Events is located there. It gives them some sort of trust and, you know, comfort. They're able to sleep at night and they know that digital events would deliver at the end of the day. But, you know, other businesses, they, I don't think they require spaces. They can still operate small. But if you want to go big, you just have to jump in. You know, you just have to jump off the cliff and then build your wings on your way down. Um, and before you know it, you should back up. Um, yeah. The other thing I want to find out from you, Moses, um, how do you sell? as in sell yourself because yeah. most of these uh, decisions um, you find that maybe your company may not be the best 
but people will choose you or prefer you because you sort better. Yeah. You get the point. I, it's, it's basically like jobs and interviews. You have a degree, I have a diploma. We go in there, <laughs> they interview us. The guy with the diploma gets a job, yeah. and you walk out complaining, no, it's connections, it's corruption. But the guy with the diploma just sold himself very well. And most entrepreneurs are very good at their craft. Yes. Like I know my job very well. I my skill, like no one beats me. Yeah. But the challenge they have is that they struggle to sell themselves. Okay, I feel like you know. Um, when you when you go and sell yourself, don't take yourself too serious to the people that you're selling. You know, try and crack some jokes here and there. Try and build a relationship, because sometimes relationships start way back before you even go and walk in a room and pitch for that business that you want. You know, relationships start way back. We'll go back to our entrepreneurs startup guy that I started. You know, I started selling myself to these corporate companies, to these corporate captains, to these CEOs, you know, before I go in a room, in a boardroom and, you know, pitch my business to them, you know. So they started knowing me from the entrepreneur startup guide. From there, I invite them for lunch. Say, look, what are you doing? Are you free? Can I, you know, fit in your schedule? I go out for lunch with them, you know, crack jokes, ask them how, how they got there. You know, I start building that relationship. So when I go in a boardroom and pull out my laptop and, you know, do that presentation, that person already in their mind, they look, they like Moses. Um, I give them the best idea that I had, you know, or I have um, best believe I'll get the deal. How do you do any that? Big, How any do you big do that company. without them thinking you want something? Because if you just call someone, like, <laughs> let's go for lunch. <laughs> like, how, how do you do the lunch without, because there's nothing where there's yeah. no free lunch. Yes. But, you know, I, like I said, I don't know. People just like me. You know, I'm a young guy with a drive. Um, and, you know, that's what people and so like. How, and uh, you keep saying people like you. How do others get people to like them? I think just, how do you know, you just like be ability? in your space. Just be in yourself. Be yourself. Be in your space. Just be you. Um, don't try and fake. Don't try and be someone you're not. You know, just be a genuine person. Be a good person. I believe in karma. Just be a good person. I believe in the universe. You know, um, I'm always giving out good energy, you know, and good energy comes back to me. Um, have, you had, have, have, you, have you ever had a difference with the client? Um, I don't even remember, you know, because... How possible is that? I don't even remember because I'm always that guy who try and find the solution no matter what problem they, are, they have because I always tell them to keep calm and Moses will handle it and his team, you know. Um, so it's always difficult for a client, you know, to say, look, there's this problem. I think we are always good at planning. We plan um, days back before an event or before an activity that we're about to do. Um, it really helps us, you know, in getting success uh, and achieving what we want. So it, I think also, you know, maybe I've had problems, but it's just the way you manage them. You know, okay. you manage them, you know, in a in a good way. You don't have to go on social media and start tweeting about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really a social media person. But, yeah, I think that's what a lot of people do, you know, when they have problems. They take it on social media, talk about this client and that client. I don't think it's, a, it's, it's good to burn bridges. I think you go in a room, eat that humble pie. If you're wrong, you're wrong. You know, you find a solution. I believe to every problem there's a solution. So, you know, you just humble yourself, find the solution, and, you know, move forward. Ten years from now, where do you see yourself? Um, <laughs> um, I see myself um, somewhere far, um, you know, big, running a very, very big company. What is far? Um, in terms of... Because you know how they say your goals should be smart, measurable, you know, real, yeah, it's the smart <laughs> goals, time bound. So instead, I see myself far. I, I feel like I want to be able to leave the business and still thrive on its own um, without Moses being there. I'm just maybe somewhere else, but the business is still running on its own. I feel I'm still trans uh, moving that, you know, power from me as a person to the business. Because whenever someone says digital events, they just think of Moses. But uh, I want them, when they think of digital events, they think of the way people just F&B. They don't even know, we don't even know the owners of F&B. Do you, do you think that's easy? Because if, if I think about Facebook, Max Yeah, I, I, it's not really easy. It's not <laughs> going to be very easy. Um, it, 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 would, it would take a lot of hard work. 
working day and night um this year i've been working day and night day and night i have no weekends off um i'm always working you know trying to expand the business trying to expand our office bring in more people um you know we are always just working it won't be really easy but you know i think it's something that that a lot of people have done and i feel like you know i can do it um and you know it will be done it's what would be the top five um, advice you'd give to someone in business? Um, top five. Yes, number one. Always go in hard. You know, do your best that you can do. You know, if you have, if they say, "Hey Moses, we have ten thousand. We want you to run the an event. I want you, you know, entrepreneurs to give their best to that business, no matter how small that money is." but they should give it their all, their best, you know, and make sure that they deliver, you know, within that minimal bu budget. Because a lot of people are always saying, oh, budget is too small, we can't do this, can't do that, you know. Be able to work with a small budget and still give the best results. Um, always give the best results. I feel like that's my number one uh, to entrepreneurs. Number two, always choose the right team very very important to have the right team on your on your on your business um, because the team can either break you or you know build you because you know sometimes you you won't be there but if you have the right team they'll know what to do but you have if you have the wrong team you find everything is just down the line you know I'll just give an example um, the last night market you know I, I was attending the awards. I wasn't there. I was nominated in two categories, event of the year and entrepreneurs of the year. But m I wasn't there. My team knew what to do. And, you know, they ran the event smoothly without me being there. Um, that's my second uh, point, have a right team. The third point, coming back, you need the right partner. You know, you need a supportive partner, someone who understands your vision. If they don't have understand your vision, um, I don't think, you know, as a person, maybe you can go somewhere else or the business can fall because, you know, of choosing the wrong partners. It's very, very important, you know, at the end of the day to have the right partner besides you. And, I, you know, I'm so grateful that I have the right partner. You know, she's always supportive. She's always there giving me the right advice, you know. Um, yeah, have the right partner. That's my third point. Um, my fourth one is, you know, hard work. You know, if you want to be an entrepreneur, it takes a lot of hard work. You know, it won't be easy. It's a lot, a lot, a lot of hard works. You know, I'm always working on weekends. You know, my girlfriend will complain, no, we can't even go on a date. But I always explain to her, look, in the next few years to come, we'll be chilling in Zanzibar or whatever. It's because of the work that I've done, you know, in the in the past. So I have to, you know, put in this work for for us to get somewhere where we need to be, for the company to get where it needs to be. Um, so a lot of hard work needs to be put in there. A lot of, you know, failures will come, but you know, you have to always keep pushing, keep moving forward, keeping a positive mind you know um and you know your business will grow because it won't be easy and you have to put in a lot of hard work you have to be humble um you know if you have to move a chair you have to move a chair you can't say no i'm a boss i can't move a chair me i'm always there with my team early in the morning setting up no one will even know that you know this is a owner of the company but i'm with the team you know making sure that everything gets done on time showing my team how it needs to be done um you know just to make sure that everything runs smoothly um i think my last point will be networking networking is very important to the business knowing the right people you know uh, knowing the the decision makers of companies for example you can be pitching for business um at fnb or any other company um, and then if you just sending your proposal to to maybe a junior manager who's not even <laughs> talking to his boss because they're scared, 
um, your business won't go anywhere. But if you know the right people in these right companies, you know the decision makers, you know the who's and who, um, you network with them, you know them on a personal level, you know what they want, how they want things done, I feel like you, success will definitely come because you know the right people, the decision makers, you know, and it goes back to networking, you know, knowing where these people hang out, if it's the golf club, if it's private clubs, you know, if it's the gym, you know, following a lot of people, a lot of successful people, you know, what they do in their routine, um, definitely success will definitely come and follow you. What's the most amount of money you made from an event? A color fest. Yeah, so what's the most <laughs> amount of money you made from an event? I can't disclose. <laughs> 500,000? Um, more than that, but I can't disclose, you know. It, uh, One million. Close to. Close to a million. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. Um, the events are quite big business if you handle them well. Um, you just, but you know, like I said, it's a lot of hard work. It's a lot, a lot of hard work, a lot of failures. Um, but you still have to keep pushing. Um, and definitely, you know. Success will come. Yeah. Thank you, Moses. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe we'll start events. You never know. <laughs> but again, like you said, and, and, and the challenge that most people have learned yeah. is because it works for someone else doesn't mean it will work for you. Yes. You know, there's always something that's going to Yeah. Work. After our color fest, we went and expanded our, you know, our office, bought new furniture, TVs, white equipment, white. You have to keep on reinvesting the money that you make in events. Yeah, because the last time I was talking to someone, I was like, some businesses want to save money. Mm. Like, what are the business be saving? Already money? I bought a stage, just transporting it from China. They want $10,000. And it's already at the warehouse right now. Imagine. So you have to find $10,000. I have to find $10,000. This guy from Michael Cargo, what, which shipping company do you need to do you use? Yeah, the same guys. Yeah. Me, I thought it would be cheaper. Wow, ten thousand dollars. That's like what? Oh, yeah. One hundred and sixty thousand. Yeah. <laughs> to bring in the stage. Thank you, Moses, for the time. Thank you so much. We have a pink launch this weekend, so we're going back now. You're going back to Livingston? No, pink launch at the Coram. Ah, I see. What's? Oh, okay, okay. Let's not advertise that. But thank you so much for the time, and uh, so I hope you guys got value you. for the conversation. Yeah. Uh, tell someone about the video, share it, and leave a comment. Um, just to give us feedback on how the conversation was. Thank you. Thank you.